Good morning. This is Ken Long from Tortoise Capital Management with a review of the weekend reports for May 7, 2011. We have a market that's in bullish normal conditions uh, on an annual basis. Uh, using weekly RSI, it's at 64 out of 100, uh, slightly high end of neutral. On a 10-day basis, we're just above oversold conditions with a score of 28 out of 100 on the 10-day NDX. The percent stretch above the 200-day moving average is bullish at 9.89%, but it's in the white. The slope of the 5-day, uh, correction of the 50-day moving average is uh, bearish. In the red, it has a value of 0.22, about where it was last week at this time, but still on the lower end of the scores it's had for the last six months, so we rate that as bearish. Uh, ADX14 has pulled back to below 15 at 14.5. It's still uh, a weekly trending market. It's really sideways market uh, when the score is at that level. ATR percentage. Uh, right about the middle of normal, it squeaked up to about 1.01%. Uh, equity sold off this week, but uh, there was some uh, rebound uh, after a 3% pull-off on Friday. Uh, commodities, the first big change in the last really four months or so, uh, cracked this week. Uh, silver especially, uh, experiencing almost a four standard deviation sell-off. That's the second largest five-day loss that it's had in the last 10 years, uh, pulling back to uh, a support level. Um, silver overextended, plus uh, a change in the margin requirements at, uh, at brokerages and banks um, triggered some selling there. Uh, rebalancing project, no change. You can see what we're holding. Uh, the next quarterly rebalancing, uh, not scheduled until uh, 1 July. Uh, in ETF2, uh, we'll be adding positions in IHF Healthcare, XBI Biotech, and XRT Retail. And uh, this week, uh, stops were hit in uh, the two silver positions, the two uh, blended commodity positions, and the oil exploration ETF, uh, taking a, quite a hit on uh, ETF2 this week. Uh, the model portfolio is at 60% recommended exposure and um, theoretical exposure will be at 60% after we sell XLE at the open. Uh, that, that one is a sell by roll. Its uh, average score and strength scores are, be are below average, and it's negative on a five-week rate of return. On the market health check, uh, again, you can see the vertical blue lines are a 10-day, 20-day, and 30-day look back. The black line in the middle is the slope of the 30-day regression line. The channel is formed by the maximum excursion from that regression line at any point on the upside or the downside. We're right at the regression line. We've pulled back to a support level that was previously resistance level, right around 134 and some change at that dotted purple line. Uh, you can see after it broke through, uh, last week, it went all the way up to 137. It has pulled back and found support where there was once resistance. Uh, didn't close especially strongly on Wednesday, and volatility is getting a little larger. Uh, but uh, if, it, if it holds support here at 133, uh, then this will be seen by technicians as a series of higher lows and a series of higher highs, which will be bullish. So looking for another test now at 137. A break north of 137 will be very favorable uh, for the indexes. Uh, in ADX uh, of, of the market, uh, we can see that uh, it had snuck just above 15 but has pulled, pulled back uh, and under 15, so a sideways trending market, very choppy. Uh, the minus DI uh, caught up to the plus DI. Plus DI is slightly in the lead right now, so we have a slightly uh, bullish uh, strength of trend developing there. Still room to go. A test and a breakthrough of 137, uh, it'll be all systems go on the equities. Price is right at the 10-day moving average, which is fair market value for those short-termers. And uh, the 10-day uh, the moving average is better than the 50, which is better than the 200. And you can see on uh, Williams percent R10, we're just coming out of uh, oversold conditions. And so this, uh, we actually have some signals for 
channeling an overreaction on Monday morning. Uh, on an annual basis, market remains well into the uh, overbought condition. In the regions of the ETF2 world market model, we have six out of ten are uh, positive with EPP right, at the, right on the balance point. So that brings us from 100% invested and 0% cash last week uh, back to 60% invested, 40% cash this week. Uh, SPY still slightly better than uh, the globals. And, and then within the U.S., it's the mid-caps. Technology has moved back into second place, the large caps and then the small caps. The two strongest sectors in the world being uh, U.S. mid-caps and technology, and then the two weakest are Latin America and EWJ, Japan. World market model, uh, you can see how this has changed uh, quite a bit week over week with uh, reds now appearing up in the uh, other asset classes with gold um, now looking better than silver. Silver and oil took the biggest hits along with the blended commodities. Uh, inside the U.S., the large caps are starting to pull, uh, pull ahead a little bit here and uh, with strength in retail and healthcare and staples and uh, the growth side is responding and that's why uh, technology has moved up into second position in the US. You can see the strength shifting. Um, in the uh, Asian uh, countries, um, Japan is actually uh, rebounding off of its disaster uh, pretty, pretty nicely. Haven't seen it much in the news lately. Uh, the rest of Asia lagging with the exception of South Korea and Taiwan. Uh, India, uh, exceptional on the downsides. So there may be some room there for bottom fishers to take a look. Uh, Latin America is the, one of the two weakest of the uh, regions, and uh, Mexico and Brazil both suffering. Uh, Germany, Switzerland, Belgium, Sweden, and France in front in, in uh, Europe. Uh, energy across the board took a hit, both globally and U.S. Uh, healthcare, utilities, and staples, the defensive sectors, are looking fairly strong on both the domestic and global basis. Uh, this week's selling, uh, we, we saw some technical pullbacks in the globals, as you can see, that have, have gone to cash on a uh, technical basis, as has uh, financials uh, in the U.S. Uh, the top 30 in the ETF2, for the first time we haven't seen silver uh, on there in about five months. Uh, Leading candidates now, uh, healthcare, biotechs, uh, pharmaceuticals, uh, re U.S. retail, and, and uh, consumer staples. Um, South Korea, Germany, Switzerland um, uh, coming in from the European sector. Uh, so we're seeing some market rotation here, I think, out of the commodities. Uh, now, interestingly, for tactical traders, that's going to create some pullback opportunities in the formerly really leading sectors of energy, commodities, and precious metals. Uh, remains to be seen how much uh, interest will still be in there. It's certainly available uh, for tactical traders. The chat room did some great work this week um, uh, in both directions on the silver market, for example. The most liquid uh, ETFs based on an average 30-day dollar volume you can see here and then those highlighted in green are the ones that have the most exceptional uh, intraday volatility and those make great trading candidates so you can see silver has doubled its intraday volatility at uh, over 7% ATR percentage now previously the highest we'd ever seen in that was uh, was over 6.5% in the VIX VXX and so silver has been uh, just extraordinary in its uh, directionality. The uh, first hour rule uh, for silver trading that, that, that at nine times out of ten lately it's been making its high of the day or low of the day in the first hour then seeing which way it breaks out from that opening candle and going in that direction paid off very very well this week with some uh, powerful directional moves intraday. So that's one of the reasons I pay attention to this report. So that's uh, that's a review of the weekly market uh, reports as Ken Long from Tortoise Capital keep your keep your powder dry and your risk measured